Hello, good morning, uh, good evening, wherever you are. We are thrilled uh, you are joining us for the official launch of the Open Wallet Foundation. We started with a simple idea less than five months ago, and I am absolutely thrilled that uh, the Open Wallet Foundation, as of today, is no longer an idea or a project, but an actual foundation. You're going to hear first from four of our first board members uh, what the Open Wallet Foundation is, what we're trying to do, uh, also specifically what we're not trying to do. And then uh, we are conducting a little experiment. We wanted to give as many people as possible a voice today. So you'll hear from a lot of folks why they are there and uh, why they think that sharing open source software for wallets is a good idea. So thank you again for being here. And uh, with that, I'd like to introduce you to uh, David Treat, who is Senior Managing Director at Accenture, to uh, Wenjing Chu from uh, FutureWay, Drummond Reed, who is Director at um, uh, Gen, and Marie Ostena, who is Head of Digital Identity at Visa. And the next slide, I think, is all for you, David. Excellent. Thanks, Daniel. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be part of this group. I think this is just fantastic and congrats to getting us to this point. So let's just jump right into it. Um, in the real world, we carry our identity, money and objects with us in wallets and purses to get the services and purchase goods and prove who we are. And we're now at the beginning of being able to do the same in the digital world. The ability to have digital wallets that can hold all forms of digital identity, money and objects in a way that's verifiably authentic controlled by the end users or wallet owners is going to be wildly powerful. These digital wallets are going to enable us to better manage what we share, with whom, and for how long. It's going to enable retailers and service providers and authorities to work with actual and verifiable data shared by users instead of harvesting data from networks and third parties. So lots of different capabilities to, of what can be put in the wallet and lots of touch points as to where it can be used and that portability and privacy and security all at the heart of it with end users in mind. If we go to the next slide, really this statement um, is, is, you know, is core. Digital wallets are going to be as essential as browsers as we enter into a period where the successful digital businesses are going to be those that establish direct trusted relationships with users through these digital wallets and users are going to gain greater control, privacy, and security. So let's talk now about the browser construction. Over to you. Wenjing. Hi, I'm Wenjing Chu. Uh, very proud to be uh, in this uh, great group. Uh, let's continue to use the um, browser analogy. Um, in the, uh, to, you know, really to illustrate what Open Wallet Foundation can do for a vibrant ecosystem around digital wallets. At the very beginning of the web, maybe around you know, 90s, we had visionaries like Tim Berners-Lee and others who came up with the core ideas. Those ideas became standards like uh, HTTP, you know, HTML, and we saw early implementations of what would become browsers and web servers. Very soon, open source projects with neutral governance uh, were started to pull resources together to reduce incompatibility to produce a better quality implementation and to experiment with many new ideas. Uh, eventually, many commercial productions chose to base their browsers on these open source browser engines. For example, Chrome and Edge were based on the, the Blink engine and so on. So why did such a uh, development pattern happen? Because it costs less, shortens time to market, offers greater improbability, ultimately deliver better overall benefits to all uh, to our users. Um, so while of course that's an analogy and each project or technology will be different, the Open Wallet Foundation aims to follow this pattern uh, to, uh, to really, uh, that's true to so many uh, successful open source projects. So let's go to the next slide. So um, what, what we like to do um, uh, in the Open Wallet Foundation is to follow this pattern and then uh, we will leverage many visionary ideas that's defined you know, in many of the open standards, some of them listed here, um, as well as rules and regulations in various markets, for example, European Union and other regions, and provide a neutral home to pull community together to develop a set of high quality open source uh, software components for open wallet. 
So we aim to achieve these uh, same goals for better uh, cost efficiency, shorter time to market, greater interoperability, and ultimately benefiting users with security, privacy, you know, simplicity, features, cost, and through the community we build together. Back to you. Marie, I think I this is yep. Hi everyone. Um, we just wanted to emphasize the main point or one of the main points that what we are trying to accomplish is not new standards, trust frameworks and governance, but we are going to build code, open source code. So let's get to the mission statement to the next slide. Um, well, let's create new ecosystems. They hold great promise, such as making digital services more convenient, more secure. They give the users more control and privacy, like what David was uh, describing. Um, however, it's really complex. There's a two-sided models, there's cross-domain, there's public-private sector collaboration required, for instance, for digital identity, or banks and card schemes with merchants, such as we have in payments, or even providing access to previously critical services, such as health. Um, so considering this complexity, it is absolutely essential that collaboration um, is, is at the key. We build on standards to create open source code to simplify the build um, of wallets, encourage interoperability across services and devices, stimulate innovation at the same time while encouraging user choice, ensuring security and, and privacy. So at Visa, we're very excited to be part of this journey and very much looking forward to the future that we can create together. Back to you. Comment. All right, so <clears throat> welcome everyone. I'm um, uh, Norman Reed, Director of Trust Services at GEN, uh, the world's leading uh, consumer cyber, cyber safety company with over 500 million users. We strongly agree that digital wallet is the most important new tool since the browser for consumers to protect, assert, and verify their personal data online and to engage in a new era of trusted relationship management. So we are super excited to be a founding premier member of this new project, hosted as you see here by the Linux Foundation Europe. So the organization, the Open Wallet Foundation is what the Linux Foundation calls an umbrella project. So our parent organization again is LF Europe. The project has a governing board that is formed from uh, the premier members plus elected representatives from the general and associate members. And next, there are two key councils, the Government Advisory Council and the Technical Advisory Council. Uh, the former is very important because digital wallets are already a, an important new tool in digital infrastructure that uh, governments are, are already you know, passing legislation around. A wonderful example is the European Digital Identity Wallets Initiative uh, in Europe, and one of the reasons we're, we're formed uh, under LF Europe. The Technical Advisory Council, or the TAC, will provide the overall coordination of the member projects that are underneath the umbrella that you see at the bottom. Now, the, the, the structure of an umbrella project is, is chosen very explicitly because it allows a collection of individual member projects that are managed and run by the participants and the contributors to each of those projects. So uh, this allows us, uh, because they can interact as peers, it allows the best of both bottom up and top-down coordination because the projects can interact as peers and then the technical advisory council can help coordinate across the project. This is how we feel we'll get the best combination of uh, world-class open source code to produce a highly secure and privacy preserving digital wallet engine that can serve uh, markets all around the world and, and be the source of many different uh, digital, uh, ultimately digital wallet projects. Daniel, back over to you. Thank you very much, Drummond. So now you're going to hear from uh, members and friends of the Open Wallet Foundation, why they are here, why they're excited in open source software at the heart of secure and interoperable wallets. I'm not going to call out everyone uh, because we really want to maximize your time. Uh, we're starting uh, with, uh, with Lofi. Thank you very much. Uh, so AMVA, the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators, represents uh, 69 North American jurisdictions that issue driver licenses and ID cards. And we also count among our members similar organizations in other parts of the world. 
and our members have a need for digital wallets that, among other things, support interoperability uh, between an issuer and a wallet and between a wallet and a verifier, that respect privacy and that allow holder choice. And so holder choice is expected to flow from open source solutions per definition. And ideally, such solutions will also accommodate the interoperability and privacy needs of issuers and our customers. And so Amber is excited about participating in the Open Wallet Foundation initiative because we believe it really has the potential to deliver on all of these points. Thank you, on to the next one. And Doc, go ahead. Sorry, I had to get off mute. Uh, Doc Searles, I'm with Customer Commons. I'm the uh, co-founder and president of Customer Commons, which represents customers, which are approximately 100% of the population. Um, where we come from is that wallets are personal in the physical world and it be in the digital world as well. So that's why I'm here to speak for the individual wallet holder and the need for our wallets to be truly ours and substitutable and not suction cups on corporate tentacles. And that's basically where we come from. Dirk, over to you. Yeah, okay. Hello everybody, I'm Dirk. I'm running the digital business, uh, digital identity business within Deutsche Telekom Group and T-Systems. And uh, why do we participate in the Open Wallet Foundation? It's very easy because we have all understood that ID wallets with secure verified credentials are really a quantum leap for everything what we do on the internet. They provide a secure digital identity and will contribute to a better digital experience in almost all areas of the life, all based for sure on the principle of self sovereignty of the citizen. As Deutsche Telekom and Tier Systems, we are really proud to be an inaugural member of the Open Wallet Foundation and contribute to a highly secure international ID wallet technology, especially also here in Europe for the EU identity. ID wallets store sensitive data and only through transparency, self serenity compatibility, and using harmonized trust angles, we do gain trust. And trust is really essential for citizens to use and to accept the ID wallet technology. Therefore, we would like to contribute too. Therefore, we are here. Vasil, you are next. Yeah, thank you. Uh, since we're here, I'm one of the co-founders of the uh, DDAS, uh, a Swiss nonprofit. DDAS stands for Digital Identity and Data Sovereignty Association. As such, our core interest is to you know, bring the dialogue and make sure that uh, the digital identity initiatives uh, that we have here in Switzerland, they embrace self-sovereign identity values. And, uh, and we view it as a very, very important cornerstone uh, for all the future uh, you know, digital interactions, obviously not only in Switzerland, but everywhere. And as such, it's very, very important for us to you know, be part of this movement because without the standards, without corporations, there's not gonna be common standards, there's not gonna be adoption, and therefore this wonderful future that will embrace data sovereignty and ability of people to own the data, to decide how they represent themselves to the world and how they conduct their business with companies and things and so on will not happen. So, you know, uh, excellent effort, looking forward to contribute and bring our members, you know, who include researchers, developers, big corporations, small corporations, lawyers, you know, uh, with expertise to the table. Hello, everyone. My name is Claire Nelson, and I'm the executive director for the Decentralized Identity Foundation, also known as DIFF. And DIFF will work very closely with the Open Wallet Foundation. DIFF and the Open Wallet Foundation are both part of the Linux Foundation and contribute to open standards and open source software, respectively, which are proven mechanisms to scale open technology projects and ecosystems. Congratulations, Open Wallet Foundation. So, uh, hello everyone, my name is Peter Altman. I work at the Swedish Agency for Digital Government. Uh, I have worked extensively with the architecture reference framework within the European Digital Identity uh, Wallet Initiative. And I will work with standards in preparation for the implementing acts for the proposed uh, ADAS revision. So the proposed concept for the digital identity wallet is a highly modular uh, or is based on a highly modular design 
And I am very interested in all kinds of open source plugins and or modules that can potentially be used for uh, the national implementations of the wallet. Hello, I'm Andre from Isatus. Uh, as many of you may know, Isatus has been an active contributor to self-sovereign identity since 2015 already. So we are very happy that digital trust ecosystems have now reached the level of attention they deserve. And it's clearly a marathon if you strive to paradigm shift the network world. But at the same time, it's a heavy lifting exercise as you need to create substantial tech, including and particularly wallets. To create a useful and broadly deployed wallet engine requires lifting synergies and joint forces. And that's what OWF is about for us. We look forward to collaborating and we bring along our extensive wallet experience from many years in the field. And in fact, we already have a lot of new stuff in the pipeline. So the next major release of the mobile Asatos wallet is closed. It will be now named Soul Wallet as part of our Soul ecosystem. And it will be extremely cool to team up in the OWF to accelerate wallet evolution overall. So stay tuned and join in, join the OWF. I'm really excited to be here today and congratulations to all. It has been quite a trip over the last six months and a big thank you specifically to Daniel Goldscheider for bringing the Open Wallet Project to the Linux Foundation. It has really been a pleasure working with you and all our founding sponsors. My name is Daniela Barbosa and I'm the general manager across the Linux Foundation for blockchain and identity projects. And I also serve as the executive director of the Hyperledger Foundation. What we're talking about here today is the larger theme of digital trust and how open source is so important to achieving critical digital trust infrastructure across our offline and offline worlds. worlds. Uh, for the last seven years, the Hyperledger community has built and nurtured distributed ledger and verifiable credential technologies, including Hyperledger Indy, Aries, and our most recent project, Anon Creds, which is the most commonly used verifiable credential format. Over the last six months or so, I, alongside the Hyperledger community members, have been working with the Open Wallet Foundation community, led by many of the speakers you have heard from here today and many others who are already contributing. And I thank you all for your support. The Hyperledger Foundation is looking forward to collaborating alongside our already mature open source projects and community to help boost the level of trust and effectiveness of digital wallets and help us build better and faster together. So thank you all. Hello, everybody. My name is Sebastian Alfors. I work as a senior architect at uh, IDNOW. So at IDNOW, we have been contributing to digital identity standards in organizations such as Etsy, Sun, W3C, Find Alliance, and the Linux Foundation for many years. And the past year, we have been very active with the European standardization work and the EUD wallet. So it's now an honor for us to be a founding member of the Open Wallet Foundation. And we are here with the intent to cross the bridge and share knowledge between the EUD wallet project here in Europe and the Open Wallet Foundation. Pleased to meet you all. Hello, my name is Tim Brugman. I'm the co-founder of IMX from Swiss. As a young company, IMX is happy to be a member of the Open Wallet Foundation because there's an opportunity to realize the shift of identification power from centralized entities to the individual, which out of our eyes has to be based on open source code. The era of an identity serving as a product controlled and capitalized by corporates is coming to an end. It is time for the people to take ownership of, of the identity and IMX is here to help shape this process and help to promote an open source wallet ecosystem. Our focus is here on compliance solutions. Thank you, Daniel and everyone for the warm welcome. Good morning, my name is Ethan Van Klausen and with ID2020. With so many aspects of digital of you know everyday life occurring online now, digital trust has never been more critical. And as this trend continues to accelerate, and as David noted in the intro, we know that digital wallets are going to be the primary means by which individuals receive, store, and share their identity documents, educational credentials, health data, money, and other digital assets. <clears throat> we at ID2020 are acutely aware that despite the pace of digital transformation, one person in nine globally, that's a, approximately 850 million people, including nearly a quarter of all children, are being left behind there because there's no official record of their existence, let alone a digital version, version that will enable them to thrive in the modern world. 
we're proud to be contributing to the work of the Open Wallet Foundation, and thank you uh, to, to all. Uh, through our involvement, we'll be working to ensure that wallets are designed intentionally and from the outset to serve the needs of all users and support to better decision making about where, when, and with whom we all share our data. So thank you. Suppose that's me. Hi, everyone. Uh, and thank you for the warm welcome as well. Uh, Sutton Maxwell at IndyKite. And uh, well, we're here because quite simply, this is a space that really just can't afford um, looking at kind of a, a siloed or, or build by build approach. Um, the core pillars of the initiative here around open source, around interoperability, and around the emergence of new trust standards uh, will not only drive um, creators and vendors to create great products and customer experiences, uh, but will also result in, in a much more kind of ethical view and sustainable view on how the technology is created. This is something we strongly believe in here at IndyKite. And in addition, you know, ensuring that consumers, when they engage online, have the freedom to maintain their identity and verifiable credentials and share relevant data when, where, and how, and with whom they choose. It's really the future kind of, and, and one of the main reasons why we joined this initiative. And of course, we wanna be a part of building it, right? So we're super excited to be here. We're super excited to join the Open Wallet Foundation uh, and join so many like-minded organizations here in the room to help contribute. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Vicky Manaila, Trust Services Director with Intesi Group, an Italian qualified trust service provider according to EIGAS regulation. Uh, why uh, we are here in this uh, really exciting initiative, because uh, shaping because we like to shape uh, technology that respects our freedom and fundamental rights as citizens in the digital world. Uh, it is of the paramount importance that technical implementations of a digital identity and digital wallets enabling our interactions don't miss anything of what makes us humans free human beings. Uh, these challenges uh, can be addressed only in a collaborative way on a common ground, which is Open Wallet uh, Foundation from now on. We are really excited to be part of this amazing group. Ned, this is a special welcome to you. And again, our apologies. Uh, I know it's in the middle of the night in Tokyo, and we're really thankful that you're here and I think I've seen a couple of people in the guest list from Australia so thank you to you as well and our apologies that we're doing this in the middle of, of your night. No problems and congratulations to Open Wallet Foundation for successful launch. I'm Nat Sakimura, the chairman of Open ID Foundation. Of Open ID Foundation, which is a technical standards development organization in digital identity. Like Bryza, are at this, the forefront of achieving the principle now. However, just being a wallet mediated doesn't achieve it. We need diversity and we need trust in the code of wallets. Transparency provided by open source implementation is therefore essential to achieve it. And much looking forward to working with Open Wallet Foundation. Thomas, over to you. Uh, hi, Thomas Harjona. I'm the director of the MIT Data Trust Consortium. So MIT is the home of the world's first open source uh, software project called Kerberos, and also the creator of the MIT license. We are very excited to see the LF launch the Open Wallet Foundation. So there's three reasons for this. Firstly, if we really want to have two, true decentralization, then users need to be empowered with control over their data, digital assets, and keys. Uh, secondly, having uh, open source implementations provides a way for the code to be analyzed from a security perspective and be assessed from a compliance perspective. And this is needed in order to achieve trust and assurance. Thirdly, having an open source implementation allow people in the developing nations to begin exploring and deploying solutions based on this freely available software. Uh, so we are very excited about this. We look 
uh, look forward to be uh, uh, collaborating and making this uh, Open Wallet uh, uh, Foundation a success. Kudos to that, Daniel, for pushing this. Thank you. Uh, hi, this is Sanjay here from the Modular Open Source Identity Platform. Uh, we are uh, proud to be a part of the launch of the uh, OWF. At MOSIP, we have been involved in helping countries develop national ID systems, uh, digital ID systems. We expect that digital credentials will replace paper for many daily users, and we are in the process of actually developing an open source wallet called Inji for this purpose. Uh, users will be able to use this identity and other credentials securely under their own control. We are glad to join this effort to work with like-minded people to create an interoperable ecosystem. And congratulations once again to the Open Wallet Foundation for this launch. Hi. Good evening. Okay, it's Nick Shaw from the Open Identity Exchange. I'm here in my corporate colors today at one of our events. And uh, our event attendees today are all watching the launch of the Open Wallet Foundation. So, so hi to everyone downstairs. Uh, we're delighted to be part of the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, it's very exciting. And Daniel, thank you for bringing us this far. And we're only just at the first steps. From our perspective, we're all about trust in identity. And wallets will carry the digital credentials, the identity credentials in future that enable us all to prove who we are anywhere around the world. And to do that, we're still going to need trust frameworks. A wallet is one component, a big puzzle that we're all trying to solve together to try and bring this dream of interoperable, safe, secure, inclusive identity to market. And the Open Wallet Foundation kind of joining that and solving this part of the puzzle, I think is absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. And really, from, from our part, we are looking at how we can express policy rules in an open policy rules exchange framework that we hope that open wallets will be able to consume to understand the policies that credentials that come from trust frameworks and uh, the new foundation. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Uh, this is uh, Patrick Harding here from uh, Ping Identity. Um, thank you to the Open Wallet Foundation for uh, pulling this together and to allow us to participate. Um, if you don't know, Ping provides identity infrastructure uh, that sort of powers identification authentication for a number of the world's largest companies, whether they be banks, online retailers, manufacturing, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've been participating in open identity standards now for 20 years or more, um, recognizing that through standards, we give organizations choice in the sort of the vendors and the infrastructure and the software they use to basically solve these identity problems. Um, now with the introduction of wallets and the notion of verifiable credentials that are exciting uh, unto itself, um, we also think that users should have choice as well in the wallets that they basically can take advantage of. So they, they shouldn't be locked into, you know, to, you know, any specific versions of wallets. There should be choice out there basically for, uh, for users. That, that choice also, I think, uh, allows for innovation to occur because I think the most critical area that's going to pre prevent adoption of, um, you know, of credentials and decentralized identity is the experience users have. A and I think enabling innovation to occur in a sort of an open way to, say, to actually get a feel for how this is going to work in the real world is critical. So we're really excited to be participating and really excited to be contributing code to the project. So thank you. I'm Lucas Fleury, I'm Chief Product Officer at Spark Media Technologies. Uh, we have developed one of the industry's first two-click Web3 custodial wallet service. And as of today, have nearly 5 million Web3 wallets on the custody. When we build our platform, we believe that we need to make Web3 wallets easy to use open as well as secure uh, for both enterprises as well as uh, the end users. Um, this requires collaboration with industry partners and the community who share those values. So we are very excited and thrilled to be a planning partner of the Open Web Wallet Package. Hello, I am Judith Flader, the Director of Strategic Engagement um, for the Trust Over IP Foundation. 
And I am very excited because we are a collaborative community that is focusing on creating a complete architecture for the uh, internet scale digital trust. And so it's so good to see so many friends that we've been working with over the years. Wallets are one vital component of that architecture. And the wallet enables people to perform a myriad of transactions. So it is very important that the engine is designed in the open with credentials and object portability built in. Having common code used across the wallet to prevent vendor lock-in and to allow people to the choice to move their digital credentials from one wallet to another as needed by the individual provides choice and confidence for trusted transactions between friends, organizations, customers, citizens, and devices. We are delighted to see the Open Wallet Foundation taking on the creation of the code of this vital component of a complete architecture for digital trust at internet scale. Hi, everyone. This is uh, the Bora Company with the Secure Identity Alliance. Uh, the SIA is a global nonprofit representing actors active across the digital ecosystem. And building further on our collaborative DNA at the SIA, we are really happy to join the OWF. We are excited to bring to the table our expertise in identity and security and work towards the development of an interoperable digital identity wallet engine that we believe can benefit society as a whole. At the heart of our decision to join OWF are our shared core values of open governance and healthy community-driven development. So we are excited to be here, to be part of OWF and really looking forward to starting this journey with the, with the community. Hello everyone, I'm Brian Ballendorf. I'm general manager of the Open Source Security Foundation uh, hosted at the Linux Foundation. And as an open source software evangelist and developer since the olden days, I've seen the amount of friction and thrash that the lack of interoperability in the digital identity space has caused. We're moving into an era though, where large language models, nation states, cyber attacks, and disinformation campaigns will make knowing more verifiably and with high confidence about who you're interacting with online ever more important uh, in a world where digital infrastructure has become critical infrastructure. It's not because we didn't have suitable standards or good enough intent. What we have lacked was a shared production ready open source client to really drive true interop at the last mile straight to the individual who has been at the who has to be at the center of any truly just digital identity system. As we saw with the birth of the web, shared code is required in addition to shared standard standards for interoperability uh, for such a foundational layer of the global technology stack. This way, we will get there faster, but more importantly, we will get there together. I'm excited about Open Wallet's potential to be that last mile in concert with and driven by all the organizations and, indiv and individuals present here. Thank you very much, Brian. I'm really proud uh, of everyone who is here, uh, everyone who spoke, and we have quite a few members who uh, were unable to speak today. And I'm also really proud of the mix. Uh, what you're seeing here is people from companies, both very large and very small, from startups to companies that have been in the business for a long time, as well as nonprofits who are either shaping the standards or bring very important use cases to the table. Um, and I believe it's going to be vital to also have a successful governmental advisory council. We believe that the only way to create wallets and source code for interoperable wallets in a truly equitable way is to bring all of those constituencies together. And uh, this event today, more than anything else, is a call to action. It's uh, really uh, an invitation to join the Open Wallet Foundation uh, and to contribute. Contributing by um, you know, offering code or developers is completely free of charge. We're really trying to attract as many developers, as many architects as possible. And at the same time, we believe that the success of the Open Wallet Foundation will really depend on creating a governance structure 
that ensures that the code belongs to all of us, not just to one company or one platform or one protocol, but is truly inclusive. With that said, um, we thought that we try to leave as much time as possible for you and questions that you may have. And uh, I think a few questions already uh, came in. The group has been answering questions uh, as they came in. Um, and one that I thought I would start all of you out with uh, is a question about what kind of open source software components Open Wallet Foundation wants to provide. This is Drum, and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and say that's a, a, a good, broad question, and they fall into several categories. Um, I'm going to name some of the obvious ones. Um, <clears throat> there are uh, several major uh, formats for digital uh, credentials today. Um, you've got the ISO MDL credentials, W3C uh, verifiable credentials, the Anon creds um, uh, uh, developed at Hyperledger are just several examples. So uh, you need code modules for um, uh, processing <coughs> both um, and, and, and uh, producing uh, uh, proofs or presentations of those credentials. So that's one category. Then there are different protocols that uh, the wallet engine will need to be able to speak to do uh, credential exchange uh, just in the area of, uh, uh, of that. Plus, of course, uh, protocols for uh, payments and then uh, for interacting with digital um, objects, room keys, uh, car keys, uh, office keys, whatever uh, those. So um, those are two major categories. Um, there are also obviously um, uh, components involved in coordination uh, across them. I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Wenjing. Oh, I see his hand up. Go ahead, Wenjing. Yeah, I'll add on uh, what Draman said. Um, there's a, one way I thought it was very um, intuitive and convenient to visualize uh, this is, you know, think about a, the, the, uh, the digital wallet as a container that we individually own. And so the first thing we need to do is that container needs some, you know, good quality code to make sure that it can live in various kinds of devices or other um, uh, objects that we own and to make them secure and, and very easy to use. So that, that's one part of that. And then within this container, you can put different things into it, right? Um, we can say, you know, assets, digital assets, that could be cards, different payments, uh, IDs, credentials. And uh, uh, so there are lots of different, I think we think of as a very valuable assets can go into uh, this, uh, this, uh, this wallet as a container. So if you imagine those two, I think the big pieces that would, uh, um, uh, you know, encaps, I think what uh, Brian was talking about as the last mile, the client that we actually use, uh, that's a, you know, quite, a, a, I think, important part of the uh, infrastructure for the future. Dirk, go ahead. Yeah, maybe one more uh, argument from my side, uh, additionally to that what we have heard already. I think beside all the new technology that we will develop uh, alongside the SSI technology, I think we have to find ways also to bridge to the current existing technologies like Almighty Connect and find ways how we can support legacy and new uh, and the new world at the same time for our customers. Because only when we address really an ecosystem in which uh, we can 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 create some kind of an ID wallet, which will have an auto protocol recognition, uh, and then we can can reply in the in the same manner like the verifier is uh, requesting the format uh, in, this, in in those uh, formats uh, in a really uh, multiple ways. And I think we will uh, end up in a compatibility that uh, we can have wallets which fits to every kind of use cases. This is exactly something that we have experienced here in the world in Europe, especially that you're not only focusing on the new things, you have to find ways to bridge the gap to the legacy architectural things as well. This one I would like to, to add here from a focus for the wallet development, uh, also from our perspective.
We have a question about the timeline. When the project would like to release code and the project is just getting started and we'll onboard through the technical advisory council various uh, of the individual projects that it will support. Um, but I don't know if any of the panelists would, would, would like to think uh, would like to talk about what your expectations are for for timing. Uh, I'll go ahead and say that, that I think all of us want to move as quickly as we can. Um, but as you just pointed out, Scott, um, in an umbrella project, it is a, a collection of individual member projects that are each going to be largely managing um, you know, their own code base and their own contributions and then coordinated across them. So it will depend on how fast, uh, how many contributions there are, how fast those projects each individually uh, uh, want to proceed. Um, and, uh, you know, again, collectively, the faster we can go, the faster we can uh, make the impact we all want to make in the market. Thank you, John. I think Dunford. the only thing I would, sorry, Scott. I think the only thing I would add is we do we do have the significant benefit of a number of uh, of folks already reaching out with uh, contributions. So we're not we're not starting from scratch, uh, you know, and that'll that'll give it a jump start. And I'll just echo you know Drummond's uh, uh, you know start opening point of you know, as fast as possible. So um, you know if you have code that you think uh, is is valid and can be contributed, we'll we'll welcome all of that to make sure we're not starting from scratch. Yeah, this Andre, I just was about to say the, the same actually, and uh, many of the members have already been working code, have, have basically uh, worked on wallets uh, for, for a long time. So I think it's it's a matter of finding the best way to basically team up and, and, and join forces under Open Wallet Foundation. So I, I can tell you a little bit about uh, my vision actually, we're, we're looking for, for contributors to the pieces we have been building around the, the area suite. And uh, we are basically about to release uh, um, our core wallet stuff as an, as an, as an SDK. I, I mean, I'm probably jumping the, the gun here about our internal comms, but it doesn't matter. So I think we actually look forward to having more collaboration around this particularly wallet SDK suite. So we can, we can work off of that. So I, my, my clear goal is to basically have that as one stream under OWF. Uh, I don't know how to, how to do this yet, but I think we'll figure it out. I'll add a one very quick point. Um, you know, people in, in open source community are very familiar with how the upstream, downstream ecosystem work in open source. And not only we're not, you know, starting from scratch based because we have code contributions ready to come in, but also that there are many very mature um, and uh, well, you know, tested uh, code out there that, that we can leverage on. And uh, I, I would just mention like hype many of the hyperledger projects um, and uh, um, uh, Daniela mentioned and uh, numerous projects in, in other, whether it's uh, within uh, Linux Foundation or other open source communities already developed. So that'll give us a very, um, uh, I think, a good start as well. Thank you. One thing I'll mention is that uh, joining Open Wallet Foundation, while any organization is welcome to, um, it is not a requirement to uh, participate technically. Our technical projects are open for participation under the terms of their respective governance documents, um, and joining uh, Open Wallet Foundation is not a requirement to that, uh, and it's also not a requirement if a project were to be contributed. Um, and so, um, uh, that's something to uh, to keep in mind. We do have a question in of, about, um, uh, I think, the slide, Marie, that you mentioned um, in terms of the areas that Open Wallet isn't focused on uh, and someone asking for more information about um, why Open Wallet uh, isn't focusing on standards and governance, et cetera. Well, I can I probably have... build them. Sorry, please, Marie, go ahead. Um, I'm sure you'll compliment it, Daniel. Um, I can probably just build a little bit more on that one. I mean, in terms of standards, there's so many of the standards organizations that has proper processes and you know great participation as well. There's no point in reinventing any wheels here. So I think that one is is um, 
is quite clear. In terms of others, like, like governance, like trust frameworks, as well as a few examples, it's a bit of the same. I mean, we have the OIX and there's more as well, and there's lots of government initiatives around trust frameworks as well. I think we will be looking here at how can we make sure that such a wallet and such as the code base for, for, for wallets can um, effectively support and work with the trust frameworks and the rules that exist in the market, like those coming out of the EU and so forth. So it's more about trying to bring to life and implement um, rather than define the, the trust frameworks and the governance around it. So getting getting all this into the real world is what we will more focus on. I don't know, Daniel, do you want to add to, add to that, of course? No, I think you are, you really said it. Uh, you know, we are very proud and, and happy to have companies as founding members that are really focusing on creating standards. And the very last thing we want to do is uh, start to compete with uh, standardization development organizations and create our own open wallet standard. We believe, uh, if anything, the world probably needs uh, fewer standards rather than more, and they're definitely not standards coming from us. Um, and you know, the same is true when it comes to governance structures or, or trust frameworks. Um, this does not mean that as an organization, we think that those questions are not important. In fact, we think they are so important that we don't want to meddle. And in my experience, um, it is rare to find a restaurant that sells everything from pizza to kebab uh, to Wiener Schnitzel and do everything at a very high quality. So hopefully we will be known for doing one thing and one thing really well, and that is to create open source software that anyone can use um, to publish their own wallets. And of course that software is going to be built on uh, the standards that, um, that exist today. And I put my hand up because I also want to highlight this is one of the uh, primary reasons for the associate uh, uh, membership and the fact that we already have 20 organizations that have signed up uh, uh, and, and joined to do that. Many of them are involved directly in the standards process, and we have invited them as associate uh, members in order to advise us and also accept you know, one of the things that happens when you implement the standards is you learn a lot and they want the feedback from that. So I see this very active feedback loop with uh, with our associate members and, and the uh, all the standards development organizations involved with the space. Um, and again, that's where if we concentrate on the code, they can get the feedback they need and everyone wins. We have a question in about um, how wide uh, does the group see the capacity of a wallet? Does it cover all dimensions of a person's life and will it be able to store a lifetime of personal data and verified credentials? Maybe I'll take this one. I don't have a, a way to, to raise my, my hand, unfortunately. Let me start with a basic principle. And, and the, the principle we're trying to do is to really have a bottom up culture. So the idea is not that, that the, the board or the technical advisory committee of the Open Wallet Foundation is going to say exactly uh, you know, what we're going to focus on, what the winning protocols or, or credential formats are going to be, what the use cases are, uh, or whether we are focusing just on wallets for people or also uh, on, on, on wallets for uh, businesses or maybe um, you know, things in the future. Our hope is that the Open Wallet Foundation is going to provide a platform, a springboard for companies and nonprofits to come together and find like-minded partners to create code. And my personal hope is that in a couple of years, we're going to look at that code and we're all going to be amazed because there are going to be projects that none of us today could have thought about. So if you have an idea, if you think that there is something that you, know, you want to work on and you want to work on that 
isolation, but with others, please consider the Open Wallet Foundation to be a partner uh, to hopefully find such like-minded partners and, and create fundamental code together. And then you know, on that one, I want to put my hand up to say that um, it does depend on what the, the members want to see happen. Speaking on behalf of GN, we totally believe in uh, a universal digital wallet that can service all parts of a consumer's digital life. Um, and and it, that's again, that's why we believe it is the most important new tool on the internet since the browser for serving everything an individual needs to do. And I think in, 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 in a few years, we will see things uh, powered by digital wallets that we never imagined. And that's exactly why Jen is here. Patrick? Oh, I got my hand up. Okay, thank you, Daniel. I, I was just going to actually say something very similar to uh, Drummond in that even though Ping is an identity company, um, and obviously we see identity related information, the stuff that you would normally see in your physical wallet, in the, in the digital wallet, we definitely see this for more than that. Pay payments being an obvious one, but even extending that into sort of the web three world um, of NFTs as well. And, and basically, you know, things, things that basically um, are associated with you and you own and you want to control digitally. So, so th I, I'm thinking of it like anything that exists in the physical world that can be digitized that belongs to you can go in this wallet essentially over time. Pat just said it very well. So uh, um, I, I will probably just rephrase a little bit. Um, you know, for all the uh, uh, internet and, and the mobile technologies that we've been enjoying for, for a long time now, um, it's always been the, the way that uh, we have a server which contains a lot of data and our client side uh, does not have much control of it. And that's, uh, that caused so many issues, I think, uh, that uh, um, uh, we, we see uh, more and more today. And uh, um, I do feel like um, the many new technologies happening very fast. Um, these uh, uh, smart AI agents, for example, really is uh, creating a space that uh, we cannot go on with the model we have today. And it is quite important, I think, that all consumers, everybody uh, use high technology should have uh, a means to really uh, manage and control your own data in the way you see uh, fit, right? And where that means coming from, we need a, a tool and that tool I think is the digital wallet. So that's everything that we still feel valuable, uh, whether that's for privacy or for any other reason, um, should it be, uh, you know, we need a home for that and that's the wallet. So I hope that uh, answers some, you know, part of that question. Thank you. We have a question in on uh, what to do about competing contributions. Uh, the Technical Advisory Council will be responsible, and we will expect this to happen very quickly, um, for setting requirements for contributions of projects. Um, in general, when you look at projects that are supported by Linux Foundation Europe and Linux Foundation, um, our perspective and our general recommendation is to take an expansive view um, and to include many projects even if there is overlap between those projects, because then what can happen when they're all communicating with each other is they can find out the areas where the other project might be better. They can further specialize in their particular focus. Um, and in some cases, projects end up uh, merging uh, as an outcome. So that's our general approach. We're looking through the Q&A for additional questions. Uh, we have a number. Uh, 
Uh, we've been asked when requests for projects will be posted. Uh, the website uh, under the Technical Advisory Council section will post information on how to contribute projects. And we would expect that um, uh, to be up uh, in, uh, in the coming weeks in the near term. And here's a question I'll uh, ask of the panel. Um, uh, we have a question on minimum requirements um, for projects in terms of uh, 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 privacy and other requirements. Um, so the Technical Advisory Council will um, be required, uh, will, will have its its parameters on in terms of what it's looking for from projects. Uh, there are certain policies that we require that projects comply with. Um, uh, for example, uh, code projects, we want them to use as their primary license. A license that's approved is open from the open source and open source open source initiative. Um, so we'll see uh, more, but we would expect the technical advisory council uh, to uh, set parameters on project requirements. And we have a question about proposing member projects. Again, projects can be proposed by anyone. If there's a group of developers that are working on a project that that feels that it's aligned with the Open Wallet Foundation, um, the instructions will be posted on the website and they can follow that process. Uh, the Technical Advisory Council meetings will be will start shortly and, and those will be public. And as I'm looking through here, uh, Daniel, I'll put you on the spot and just see if there's any questions that, that you're looking at that you'd like to answer. Uh, there is actually a question from Oleg that I'm I'm just seeing here, whether or not you know we're going to be subject to uh, EU rules or, or rules from the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, yes, absolutely. So when you look at different uh, code components and different use cases and different jurisdictions, there will be different rules. And sometimes these rules are going to be made by governments. Sometimes they are going to be made by organizations like EMV Co. But uh, in any case, um, you know, when you are trying to be, create code that is useful, um, you will need to live up to those, um, to those rules and, and regulations. And so this is one of the reasons why we're not proposing one monolithic project, because we don't think it is possible to create one code base based on maybe even a one or two protocols and, and, and credential formats that is going to be useful for every use case in every country. Uh, you'll probably for a long time need to work with different credential formats, with different protocols, uh, adhering and living up to very different rules. And of course, we're going to be subject to those rules, whether they're going to be um, mandated by a government or whether they're mandated by um, a, a private organization. And David, you had a hand up, is that? I, I, I was, I was uh, Daniel covered it well. I was just gonna uh, underscore the point that of course we're not building, just to, just to make it super clear, we're not building the wallet, right? We're building an engine for wallet builders and that alignment of, of meeting a community's, you know, a community of small or large or government, you know, countrywide communities, laws, policies, regulations, and social expectations, and the use cases, uh, there were a number of questions that were jumping, I think, to the conclusion that we were building a wallet. And of course, that's not what we're doing. We're building the componentry to be able to, to have, uh, have companies build wallets to meet their individual communities' needs, objectives, you know, as well as law, policy, regulation, and cultural values. We are at the uh, top of the hour, uh, and I'm sure, you know, just looking at this, there are a number of questions that we have not answered. I hope that uh, we are, we have captured uh, those, those questions. If we have not, and we're not answering those questions uh, in the next 24 hours, please do send another message to us and we will try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, you see here again, uh, a call to participate. The Open Wallet Foundation is only going to be as good as the code contributions and as determined as the developers are going to be that are joining. 
and we're going to be only as democratic as the companies and nonprofits and representatives of governments that decide to join the Open Wallet Foundation as members or participants of the uh, Governmental Advisory Council. We really depend on you to try and uh, make this a success. And I believe wallets are too important to not try to address them together. So this is a call, this is a plea to come together. Uh, even though we may be in love with different credential formats or different protocols, we may have different ideas about privacy or security. Um, my hope, our hope, is that we are sharing an innate desire to create fundamental open source software for secure and interoperable wallets together. And we here hope that you are going to join us if you are not already on, on board. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. And that will now conclude our webinar. Thank you for joining us today. And to the panelists, thank you, every, everyone, for joining and participating. Thank you, Scott and Daniel, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Um, I want to thank all of our panelists for their time today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Just a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. We hope you join us for future webinars. Have a wonderful day.